By the year 2026, just two years from the making of this video, at least 22 international missions are expected to touch down on the moon. Some of the countries include the US, Japan, South Korea, Russia, India, the United Arab Emirates, among others. But this time last year, NASA unveiled its four-member crew headed for the moon, Artemis II, a 10-day flight marking the agency's first manned moon voyage in over half a century. But this brings up the question, why is there so much attention being focused on the moon, considering a five-decade break from moon voyages in general? Here's a hint. Nobody has discovered any oil on the moon, and it's actually a much larger problem that's driving this new moon race. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. Water. This is the first and main reason that all countries are giving as a justification to spending billions for this new space race to the moon. There is the potential to find water on the south pole of the moon, don't get me wrong, but discovering water on the moon is just the first smaller step to another much larger goal, militarizing space. And doing it before anyone else to gain the advantage is essentially a new level of competition from some of the richest nations on earth. And who does this benefit mostly? The tiny section of capitalists from those countries, while the rest of the country and its people continue to struggle with access to basic necessities to life such as healthcare. As the global network has made pretty clear in previous videos, the militarization of space is the dominant goal of most imperialist nations today, and it's becoming more and more of a threat to all of us. And the closest celestial body to the Earth is the Moon. So it would be logical, as a military strategy, with the goal of having dominance in the skies above, to build a military outpost on the Moon. This prevents unnecessary missions back to Earth to gather essential resources like water, so while the main narrative to get to the moon so quickly may be stated as the goal to find water, the real goal is to build a military outpost on that moon and have a military advantage over others. This idea is not novel. It goes back to 1959 when the US Army completed a study for opportunities to place soldiers on the moon through what it called Project Horizon. This study proposed deploying soldiers to the moon by 1966. They designed blueprints of the entire outpost, including a detailed area of the living quarters. In early 2022, the US Air Force Research Lab made a pretty significant announcement, one which barely got any attention. They announced that the Pentagon will be extending its operations from 22,000 miles above Earth to 10 times that distance. And you'll never guess what it's called. The California Highway Patrol System. I mean, excuse me. I meant the Cislunar Highway Patrol System, or CHIPS for short. I kid you not. Until now, the United States space mission extended 22,000 miles above Earth. That was then. This is now. The Air Force Research Laboratory is extending that range by 10 times, and the operations area of the United States by 1,000 times, taking our reach to the far side of the moon, into cislunar space, far beyond the crowd. The Cislunar Highway Patrol System, or CHIPS, will bypass thousands of government and commercial satellites as it makes its way to a rarely before visited domain, 272,000 miles from Earth. As NASA and numerous commercial companies look to extend our presence beyond the International Space Station to the lunar surface and interplanetary destinations, increasing space traffic to the moon many times over the coming decades, the U.S. Space Force will ensure the peaceful development of space, 
keeping our missions safe and secure in these distant frontiers. The responsible use of space and unfettered access to space domain awareness ensures collision avoidance, on-orbit logistics, communication, navigation, and maneuver, all critical to the United States and allied space commerce, science, and exploration. AFRL, on Earth or hundreds of thousands of miles away, providing the technology to ensure safe space exploration, keeping an eye on adversaries, and providing critical national defense capabilities to the moon and beyond. The Research Center from the Pentagon is looking at the space between Earth and the Moon as the next Interstate 405, or should I say, the first intercelestial body state. They see the space traffic from Earth to Moon increasing so much that it will be required to patrol those highways, or spaceways. Essentially, this is that same idea behind protecting free trade, just like how the US military patrols the entire world with nuclear-powered and nuclear-armed submarines and warships in order to protect so-called free trade. While this is true to some degree, it really just gives the US and its trading partners who capitulate to US policies an advantage over other nations and producers. Now, they are taking this idea towards space. We weren't lying when we said that the U.S. wanted to take capitalism to outer space two years ago. The U.S.-based think tank CSIS published a report in early 2022 titled Fly Me to the Moon, saying that 106 cislunar and lunar activities are planned in the next decade, coming from 19 nations. That is a lot of activity around the moon. Besides, the typical larger base economy nations like the US, China, and Russia, who we should all know are going to do these space activities, one of the most ambitious plans actually comes from the United Arab Emirates, who plans on sending over 1,000 people to the moon by 2045. In a world where the US already spends the most on its military budget, and has the most powerful military in the world, we can see why the Pentagon wants to extend its arms into the cislunar arena, and specifically to the moon. And this idea of creating a highway patrol is just an extension of what the US is already doing on Earth. So, as we hear more and more from mainstream media outlets in the coming years about the so-called scientific exploration of the moon and its cislunar space around it, Hearing that the goal is to find water, you'll notice that what is left out of the news stories is the real intention of all these cislunar missions, to have a military advantage over space activities, with the goal of completely dominating space. And the U.S. has stated this, as Trump said years ago, We must have American dominance in space. So important. This goal might become a reality. But the question is, at what cost?